Hi, I'm George. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm here in Spain, in the very south of Spain, the region known as Andalusia. And it's the summer, it's August, it's incredibly hot. It's about 44 degrees. And I'm here with my good friend, fellow artist, Max Denison Pender. So he's gonna be doing a plein air painting today, a really big one. So we'll be able to see how that goes. And I'm gonna be painting the almond orchard. So as you can see here, this is where almonds grow. Um, the almonds in Spain are really nice, really fresh. Uh, so yeah, good stuff. And I'm gonna be trying to paint a plein air painting of the orchard, probably get a bit of the vineyard in the background. So let's get into this video. Remember to please hit that subscribe button and let's start this video. Hit the subscribe button, baby. You heard him. Let's go. So today I'm painting with oil paint on a gesso primed panel, which is 30 by 25 centimeters. And I've applied a sort of brownish, slightly reddish imprimatura to the painting. And here I'm starting off sketching with raw umber and I'm just trying to paint in the composition. So when you design the composition of the painting, it's good to try and avoid placing everything in the center of the painting. For example, you want to place the horizon line either above or below the center line in general. And same with areas of visual interest, such as the trees, I'm placing them slightly to one side. However, you don't want to place things of importance too far from the center as you don't want the viewer's eyes to look outside of the painting. But I'm trying to make it a bit more interesting than having everything in the middle. Here I'm painting in the sky. It's really hot and sunny, but the sky is actually a slightly murky blue. So I'm not using pure blue. I'm using a mix of titanium white, ultramarine blue, and a small touch of raw umber, just to gray the sky down slightly and stop it from being too vibrant to blue. And here I'm massing in the dark greens, the shadowy parts of the painting and, and the vineyard and the trees. And I'm trying to get everything down as quick as possible using a relatively big brush. And after this, I can then go into the specifics and pick out smaller details and start painting the lighter areas of the leaves on top of some of these shadow areas. To paint the branches, I'm using a thin brush and I'm using quite thin down paint with my medium so that the paint can move fluidly across my panel. And as I paint these lines with the branches, I'm being very definitive and just painting the brush stroke in one direction. This also helps prevent me from picking up paint underneath and stops the lines from getting too chunky or messy. One of the nice things about working with this warm imprimatura is that it isn't too far off the value for the ground and the hills in the background. And this way it's a lot quicker and easier for me to get a close visual impression without having to paint every area of the painting. But then I can go on top of this and pick out those subtler details, those shifts in color and hue. And if there happens to be any areas which are left uncovered by the paint, they won't be striking to the eye as this color merges in quite nicely to the painting. And having some warm colors showing through, just breaking into the paint here and there, can be quite a nice effect and can add some vibrancy to the painting. I'm now just picking out some details in the background using a small filbert brush from Rosemary & Co. It's an ivory, so it has a nice bit of spring in it and it's got quite a fine point. So I can pick out the subtle details for these small trees. Now I'm painting in the foreground and I'm using quite a bit thicker paint on the areas in light and I'm keeping the shadows quite thin. I'm also making sure that the shadow edges are quite soft. I'm now going in and picking out a few smaller details in the shadows as when painting outside, 
you often get a lot of light going into the shadows and it is quite fun to pick out some of that detail however you need to make certain that you keep the shadows still quite uniform as if you add too much detail and too many shifts in value the shadows can start to look a bit confusing and the image won't read that clearly so I find it helps a lot to squint and make sure you group the lights into one group of values and the shadows into another group of values and you have areas in the shadow competing with the brightness of areas in the light as it can be easy to do this is when you look into a shadow when you really open your eyes you can really see all those subtle changes in light and areas which look a lot lighter but it's good to always to step back and squint and realize that everything in that shadow is going to be darker than the areas in the lights. Here I'm using a small brush to pick out some of the details in the foreground and painting some of the small shrubs that are breaking that line between the foreground and the background. Hi, so I hope you enjoyed that video. I believe I've finished the painting now. It's been fun, it's been hot, uh, but really nice painting here in the Almond Orchard. Let's see how Max is getting on with his painting. So, Hello there. You can see Max is going pretty big. So how's it going? It's going all right, you know. It's, uh, I'm trying to avoid getting it too bitty. So I'm starting with the floor today, but uh, and then tomorrow doing the leaves, but I don't want to overwork the floor. Nice. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I think I'm... Nice. So you reckon, what, about two days? Yeah, two, two days three days. Nice, so that's it. So he's going to be working for a few days on this one. And um, how do you carry such a big painter like that? I mean, well, basically, you remember that thing you were telling me about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, your your oh, the entrepreneurial, Alabama, the Alabama carrot. carrot yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I've got one of those, and basically, it stops the paint clashing. Use I used to use like nice, yeah. bits to hold it together. They'd always slip out. So now I've got yeah. this Alabama art carrier. It like, you know, you can hold it over your shoulder, and it stops them from clanging together. And then the paint is like not touched at all nice. and you can take it anywhere it's brilliant that's awesome yeah <laughs> Excuse my language. yeah yeah so yeah that's that's amazing so guys if you're interested in that i'll put a link to that in the description like you can oh, come over here actually i'll show you uh i use it as well so um yeah the outer prima carrier you can slot your paintings over there so um whatever size panel you're on you can use it to carry carry your paintings but anyway i'll put a link to that in the description I'll put a link to my Instagram, my Facebook, my website, everything in the description to the video and a link to Max's Instagram and his YouTube and Facebook as well. So make sure you give him a follow as well. Yeah. Um, so anyway, take care and I'll see you in the next video. From midday on with that. So did you do the shadows first? And then... I did the light first and then put them in. It's just a bit, bitsy, bitsy right now. It's like no, too many awesome. bits everywhere. No, but...